So I'm going to talk in this video about the biggest lie in modern society. <laughs> That's a big one, right? But it is so profoundly big and all pervasive that unless you're aware of it, it's going to lead to emotional pain in your life. So let's get into it. So what is the biggest lie in modern society? We live in a capitalist society here in the West, okay? And this is not going to be an anti-capitalist video. Capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than anywhere. And it, it's associated with individual freedom and liberty. You know, you can vote with your, with your money every time you go into a shop, right? And we know that central governments who plan, you know, socialist economies generally tend to become tyrannical and lead to social unrest and poverty, right? So this is not anti-capitalist. But there is something that needs to be said for the psychological well-being of people, particularly people living in the West, that is often not talked about enough, right? So when we hear terms like retail therapy, you know, when a person goes to the store to buy clothes or whatever it is, buy anything, and it makes them feel good about themselves right that is an indication of what i'm talking about that's what i'm driving at here okay the problem we have or the big lie is that corporations you know they know a secret about people and they know it because of research theories by freud but other people that came after freud um, Edward Bernays, the far father of public relations, okay, he was the guy that kind of spearheaded all this stuff. Mad men, you know, advertisers in Madison Avenue that make millions of dollars a year and corporations invest huge money into this advertising that goes on to sell their products. It all shifted based on Freud's theories. It used to be that we would buy things because we needed them and capitalism was great for that. Right. It, it set prices so that there was never a shortage of bread in the shop and never too much bread in the shop. Okay, It was perfect. But the corporations, they know from psychoanalysts that people are not always driven by necessity or rationality or logic. They're driven by deep fears. And there is a void in most people. A perceived void in themselves and that can be used to control people that can be used to make people do things that they wouldn't otherwise do rationally right things that are not in their own best interests so what they do is think about all advertisement you see right they get very um, attractive celebrities okay and there's a, always an association with a happy life if you buy this product right or um, the perfect relationship if you buy this item of jewelry or you buy this item of clothes, clothing, or whatever. So what corporations are trying to do is they, they had a fear after, um, after the Second World War, basically, that the production line was churning out all this stuff. Economic growth would stop if people stopped buying things. So they were terrified that once people's needs, their, their basic needs had been met, consumption would go down. So they came up with a strategy, we're going to change it from a needs-based economy to a desires-based economy. So then everything, all advertisement was, you're not going to buy this because you need it. You're going to buy this because you, you desire it. It's going to complete you as a person. It's going to complete your life. It's going to make you more than you are. And it will give you this life, this perfect pic you know, picture of a life that we, that, you know, Hollywood and, you know, uh, culture promises people. And it will complete you. So the problem, I mean, that's like a pretty low down thing to do, right? But at the same time, corporations are, their purpose is to make money. So they're going to use whatever strategy they can use. So I'm not even, 
I think it's pretty, pretty sick, but I'm not really blaming corporations. What I'm trying to talk about here is how you can free your mind from this needless obsession with consumption. Right? Because it's in you. They identified an issue in people, in us, right? that can be preyed upon. So if we take responsibility for it and we get in touch with that feeling inside of incompleteness, I'm not enough as I am. I need all my fantasies, desires and, and uh, wishes to come true. And I can do that by going into some store and buying something that I don't need, right? We can take responsibility for that. Okay, it's not the corporations. Waiting for the corporations to change is never gonna happen, right? What we can do is get in touch with ourselves and realize, why am I buying this? What is the fantasy I've been sold in all the advertising, right? That I'm gonna meet somebody special and my life's gonna be perfect? big question mark and how damaging is that because all of this stuff all of these advertisements it reinforces the belief that I'm not enough right there's always something new to buy there's always something else on the horizon you know and you'll, you'll buy one thing and two days later you're sick of it right you realize you know what that didn't really help it helped me for a day or two but now there's something else I want because there's a bombardment of stuff coming at you through the media. That's what it's all about. That's how TV shows run. TV shows are not designed to entertain you. They're designed to get you sitting down in front of a TV so that you can be subjected to advertising. That's the entire financial model of television is to pitch you things um, the mo for the most part you don't need at all, at all. And it's to play on this fantasy we have about this perfect life when I'm good enough. Now, it's dangerous because as I said, it reinforces the idea. The more you seek for these things, these buy these products that you don't need, the more you do that, the more it reinforces the idea that I am not enough. And that's why particularly, I love the United States. I've been there. And there's more people on antidepressants in the United States than there are anywhere in the world, particularly in women. People are hugely unhappy there. Now, it has everything. It's, it's the richest company or country in the world, you know, taking aside the massive debt they have, but which all European countries have too, by the way. But all their basic needs have been met a long time ago, but unhappiness is getting worse. It's getting worse, not better, right? More and more people now on medication. It's because of this susceptibility we have to buy into this fake consumer-based happiness. That's, what the, that's where the happiness, and the reason it's getting worse is the more you buy into it, the more it reinforces that you are not whole as you are. That's the truth. That's the truth of the matter. That's why unhappiness is getting worse. There are a lot of reasons. But that's one of the main ones, right? That's why, you know, you would think, looking at it logically, all their needs are met there. In the West, generally, all our needs are met, for, mo for the most part. I mean, everybody, you know, bar people who are, you know, suffering with mental illness and have addiction problems, you know, for the most part, um, people's needs are met and they can be met quite easily. Their survival needs. But there's this underlying sense through advertising that you need to buy this, buy this, buy this. And if you buy into that, that's when things get bad, okay? You start to believe all the propaganda, which is exactly what it is. So, take away from this is, stop buying shit you don't need. Right, simple as that. Don't blame corporations. Don't blame anybody. Don't blame yourself either. But take charge of this, right? Do you need this stuff? Just look at the credit card debt in America. Most of that stuff is for like needless things. People are, they're, they've play, they're, they're playing on your fears and irrationality to an extent where you're putting your financial future in jeopardy. That's how irrational this is. 
It's putting the lives of your loved ones, if you're in a family, in jeopardy, their future in jeopardy, because there's this constant need to buy a bigger TV set or buy a new pair of Nikes, okay, because we've seen some celebrity or Kim Kardashian wears them, right? And we associate the perfect life with that. Now, we think that we don't fall for it. We think that we're above that. I'm not really buying it because Kim Kardashian wears them or because um, Kanye West likes them. You know, we think we're above it. We're not. And they know we're not because we're not ruled by the conscious mind. It's the unconscious, irrational drives that are in charge. And if you think they're not, think again. Look around. Okay. But take responsibility for it. And maybe it doesn't apply to you. If you're, if you're honestly, you know, you're not buying stuff you don't need. Okay. But if, you, if, if you've got huge credit card debt, why? Why do you buy all this stuff? And, you, and, and for, for another interesting thing is you, you, you've probably asked yourself that question a million times. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep buying this stuff? Why can't I save any money? Why am I living paycheck to paycheck? There are a lot of reasons for it, but this is one you can take control of. Right? Stop buying stuff you don't need because you don't need it. It will do nothing for you. It will hurt you. Okay, so that's my message. Stop buying stuff you don't need. And watch yourself heal when you do that. You will start to feel better about yourself. The products won't help you. They're not going to help you make, make yourself feel better about yourself. Right? They're going to make you feel worse about yourself and make you feel anxious for the future because your financial wealth is being eroded. Okay, so bear that in mind, guys, and I will talk to you soon.